Welcome, students. Welcome, students. Students, welcome. Mm. Welcome, students. File. Get, file in to file the class. In. Get Alphabetical in your seats. Alphabetical order. We're going to call roll. We're going... Okay, here's roll. Ring, 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 ring. Hello, roll. Is it you, roll? Is it you, roll? Just a little joke. That's just a joke. We. <laughs> that's just a... a Lighten the mood for the class. Here's roll call. Um, Serenity Pot, are you here? I see it. Rebecca see Roney, are you here? I see them both. Negapole, Dread Futures, Intergalactab, are you here? I see, I see Negapole, I see Dread Futures. Lovesick. I see lovesick. Xander Strawman. I see him. Zandrew Burt, are you here? Are you? <laughs> are you here? <laughs> I can't see. Hi, everyone. Gonna make it hard to do the uh, the critiques. Yeah, I'm just gonna feel it out, I think. Yeah, <laughs> just vibe it. Yeah, I get the feeling that you didn't push the pose enough. I <laughs> could say that it. probably, you can always say that and it's, Probably always true in like 90% yeah. of cases. It's pretty good. That's just a good... We're teaching people how to teach over here. Yeah. Just say you didn't push the pose enough. I'm going to be saying yeah. that today. I know already. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thank you, draw class watchers. You are the lifeblood of my heart. Wow. Because you you support the channel. We appreciate it. Yeah. It's great. And 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 as a thank you, we're going to be looking at your art and we're going to be telling you how to do it better. Probably. Yeah. Well, Jacob's going to be doing most of that and I'm and I'm also here. Nathan's here too and Nathan's going to be eating a breakfast burrito quietly. I'm going to be eating a breakfast burrito <laughs> quietly. I'm going to be sneaking bites. And and his camera's going to go blurry for no, <laughs> Why did you do that? for no reason. Do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting here. Nathan, <laughs> Nathan's showcasing Gaussy and Blur. It's just because I'm a cryptid, so yeah. I'm, sometimes I have that effect on cameras. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I'm wearing my like droppy shirt today with my with our faces, and you can't even see it because of the because I'm so zoomed in, so that Julie oh. is not on screen. All you I'm can wearing, see is Julia's ponytail. I'm wearing one of our. 2022 pride shirts i love those ones they're really good those are ones that i'm like i want to wear this like out like this is just a good looking t-shirt this is a good because julia did the fashion yeah she, she fashioned the fashions it. and i'm like I, I feel like i'm not advertising my own channel when i wear this no. i feel like i'm just wearing a cool shirt i i've reached a point where like too many of my clothes are droffy shirts yeah it's i have a separate drawer that's just filled with our own <laughs> merch and i mostly <laughs> just wear it at home they're like my at home shirts because i yeah. i'm so scared and it's happened to me yeah. i've been recognized outside wearing my own damn shirt like you you're just out here wearing wearing drawfee merch i mean that's a way to that's a way to get recognized for sure. People for sure, like, but then it looks like I was trying. <laughs> it looks yeah. like I wanted it. Yeah, the, the pride like, shirts are like the only ones that I I wear out regularly. Literally. Regularly. That one and the grizzly pair because there yeah. are enough boot. I could just be someone who saw it on Redbubble and doesn't know what Drafi is. That's or, very true. Know. And just bought the shirt sight unseen. Just bought the shirt. I was like, this is a cute looking bear. Um, I'm seeing in the chat, Cat Kane is here, their first draw class. Wow. So happy you could make it. Welcome. You got a pride shirt in your Welcome, mystery tea order? Student. Hell yeah. I forgot Welcome. about the, the mystery tea orders we did. That's fun. I hope everyone got fun shirts in their mystery tea collection. Mystery tea is my favorite member of the A team. Oh, yeah. He sure is. Mm -hmm. um we should start these people Let's didn't see. pay to hear us talk about our own shirts they they didn't 
They're here to 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 get what? art critiques. I thought that was the theme of the draw class. <laughs> talk about our shirts. Absolutely. Learn how to not. listen to us talk about our shirts. Um, I'm gonna switch to starting soon for a sec while I share my screen so that I don't dox myself. I'm gonna quietly eat this burrito. Nathan's gonna quietly eat a burrito. Mm. I'm gonna bring it back in. Zoom is doing that fun thing where it's my little bar is like floating in the middle of my screen. That's so cool. Can you go away? Just go away. Go away. <laughs> it's not going away. It just sits there. I'll make it go away. There's I nothing know the you keyboard can do. command. Oh, what's the keyboard command to make it go away? Control Alt Shift H. Really? Makes it disappear completely. But then you have to do it again to bring it back if you want to okay. do anything. But I, yeah, I never want it. Yeah, no, no one wants it. No one wants it. I've seen a lot of W's in chat for Nathan's burrito. Thank you, thank you, Chad. It's a, it's a major win. It's a, it's good. It's a good one. We're um, not here to talk okay. about it. No, I'm, I'm gonna pull up our first piece here. I'm gonna be going in order of, of submission, submission order here. Okay. So this one actually is from Catechus Flinch, who, who was their first time in the, in the stream. Wow, first time in the stream, first one on the stream. Incredible. So we're going to be, I'm just going to screenshot it. At what point does the number of keys make it no longer a shortcut? It's a that's, good question. It's a really good question. <laughs> We've got this excellent Cupid. Ooh. Cupid boy here. Cute boy. Very cute boy. Uh, let's go back so I can read the chat. Oh, it's a few people's first time in the draw class. Katie Birdie, Laura Kitzberger. Wow. Welcome, welcome to the draw class. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we're looking here at um, at this one from from uh, Cat Catechus Flinch. And they said, here is a piece I would love for Jacob to critique in the next draw class. I'm open to feedback on all aspects from anatomy to color slash lighting. Great. I'm excited to look at it. Um, Okay, so usually when I'm critiquing, I, I try to go with like, we have the benefit, right, of like seeing these for the first time right now. Mm -hmm. And so we get like the, the first impression, like what jumps out at me straight away. Yeah. Um, what jumps out at me straight away positively is I feel like you did a great job anatomy wise from this, the whole like, let's, uh, let's do this a bit here. The whole torso, this situation, into the legs. Yeah, it's a nice bend. It's a good bend. It's a nice looking anatomy. I feel like the legs are both lengthwise. Like you got everything in the right spots here. And great job on the shoes. I was going to compliment the shoes as well. I hate drawing shoes and those are some good looking shoes. For sure. I think anatomy wise where we're we're losing the thread a bit is the arms. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just gonna we're gonna continue to redline here. I'm gonna lower the opacity a bit more. Cause we have the torso here, and I get that like what you're going for here is that this shoulder is higher than this shoulder. So this arm would be higher up than this arm but I think the elbow is a little bit too high. Hi. I think you would need the shoulders to be more, more of an intense curve in order to make that work. Cause I'm looking at this arm, like where it connects, the upper arm is too short compared to the forearm, which is quite long. Do you see what I mean here? Mm. The elbow should be, um, if I'm just like going to try to do the same thing real quick. The elbow should be further down, kind of like this. And that's going to make it look a little bit more natural there. And then I think uh, on the other side, you actually have the opposite issue. Which is that this part of the arm is a little too long from where it would connect. Because you got to remember that it's going behind the body a bit. So you're not going to see the entirety of that upper arm area. Yeah. Because it's uh, obscured. 
So I think it got a little bit too long compared to the forearm in this one. Yeah, hmm. where it would connect here, this is a little bit too long. You got to swap. You got to swap them out. You got to swap them out. <laughs> match the short forearm with the short up arm, and and switch and do a switchums. Absolutely. And so <laughs> I'm gonna try to, you know, just do like a similar, a similar pose here, so you can like see what I mean. Because if we got one shoulder coming out here that's in front, and this one's behind, and they're angled like this. Then we'll have this arm that comes down this way. And then this arm, because it's a little bit more obscured, you're going to see less of that arm. You want this length from like here to here to match this length from here to here, basically, mm -hmm. <laughs> including the part that's obscured by the torso. You got to make sure to account for that part. Uh, and then you got sort of this foreshortened or shortened arm here like this and you know holding the holding the thing yeah so something like this might be a little bit more torso maybe a bit longer yeah that's just what I'm seeing there and then some hands yeah, just yeah, sort not, of um oh, go ahead, sty stylistically um and th this is this is up to you but just like this is less of like a, a correction and more of just like a, a a bit of advice um if you go back to your little sketch jacob uh-huh uh a thing i like to do is like if there's a joint that you can bend in a different direction rather than have it be straight i like to bend it so i think that that hand on the near arm you could bend that wrist down a little bit make it oh, look yeah. a little, a this little one. more casual totally uh, and it just makes it a little bit more visually interesting i absolutely agree so something more like this so, yeah exactly where it's like a little bit more lazily holding that bow sort of a lazy grip on the bow does kind yeah. of make give it a little bit more um it just makes it a little it. bit more interesting to to look at um and again that's that's totally up to you that's not like a hard and fast rule or anything uh, I, i'm in agreement with you though nathan i usually try to do that as well i mean you can even see that i did it with this wrist just yeah um instinctively <laughs> Yeah, uh, I took this wrist over here and I, I bent it a little more just for a little bit more uh, wrist expression. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I want to point out with this one is I think there's some uh, face angle anatomy mm -hmm. um, issues as well. Uh, and I should say, as always, of course, I drew on the wrong damn layer that I actually do really like this piece. I think the colors are really nice and the shading is really nice and the clothing folds. And you also did the thing where you like highlight the the focal point, making yeah. like the face a little brighter than the body and like a sort nice, of doing a gradient. Nice gradient there, yeah. Yeah, which I do really like. But we're gonna take a look at the, um, at the face here. Oh, I also really like the swoopies on the the hoodie strings that adds a yeah nice that's good adds like bit movement. Of movement yeah totally uh so we'll zoom in a bit here so there's a i think the issue here is primarily with the eye placement mm -hmm. um and a way we can sort of like examine this um we'll actually bring this up for a sec is if we put something over the top I'm just going to make a box. Make a box. I'm just going to make a box. If we put this box over the top of like a portion of it here, and we look at it this way, and then like as you're looking at it, imagine in your mind where you think the eyes should be. 
when it's revealed mm -hmm. and then move it and you'll see it. It gives you like a fresh perspective. Yeah. You'll like see it fresh and be like, oh, that's not where I imagined they would be based on this head angle. Yeah. That's a good little like hack you can do. It's similar to like flipping the canvas to like give you fresh eyes on a part that you're not sure on. Um, and so when I revealed them, I immediately saw that the, um, let's just make a new layer. The eyes are going almost like horizontally, whereas the rest of the head is like angled upwards. So like this bit is angled upwards. This bit is angled upwards. I feel like the ear you got in a good spot compared to the nose and mouth in terms of the ratios. You got the chin angled upwards. Yeah, that, that under chin area is really nice. Yes, that is really nice. The shading and the neck looks really good. But then the eyes are going almost like straight across yeah. at a different angle than the rest of the head. And so I think what you'd want to do with this nose here like this is you'd want to get the eyes going at a similar angle to uh, everything else here. So, you know, put them more like, I'll try to do it in like a similar style as well. Cause this one would be almost fully obscured by the, by the head here. Yeah. And if you don't want to draw that eye, you just cover it with hair. <laughs> yeah, that's a good <laughs> hack too. <laughs> just, you know, I'm just gonna, yeah. Getting eyes in the right place is, uh, is complicated. Yeah. And this one's going to be really foreshortened. So, you know, something more like this. And even that's not maybe quite enough, but feel free to like experiment with it as you go. Yeah, it just needs to be, just needs to be moved a little bit. And then I think you know, back of the head maybe needs just a s slight bit more volume. And then I'm just, you know, quickly doing this. And then like the eyebrows too. So something like this. And, and do be sure as well to do that, to work on that canvas flip as you go. Yeah, I mean, that's really rough, but you can see the, um, the difference in terms of, let's just move it out. In terms of placement, yeah, it looks a little bit more natural. And you know, still not perfect, but... Squeep. Squeep. Feel free to grab elements and squeep them around. And then, you know, hit that flip when you need to hit the flip and that'll help you see it too fresh. Uh, an excellent right, work on this hand. Yes, that that's hand's a, awesome. That's a great hand. Uh, what were you saying, Nathan? Oh, just like with eyes, when, when you're looking at them from and I know it's it's tricky depending on like how you're how you're stylizing them, but like typically when you're looking at eyes in profile, they're gonna come to sort of like a, a triangle yeah. on the side. Like when you look at, at an eye fully in profile. So like this is a like this. Like a three quarters view. So even though these the the way you've drawn the eyes is they're sort of more like rectangular shaped, uh I think, yeah, like the way the way you did them, where they like come to more of a point at the uh, at yeah, the side. You, you want to favor the the side, like where this sort of point happens. I usually exaggerate it in the way I draw eyes, but different people do it differently. But there will always be a favored side if you're at a three quarters view. Yeah. So it'll be something more like, like like this. 
if you're not doing it like so favored like I do it. Yeah. If they're looking, you know, this way, this Those, way. Yeah. yeah, they're little they're little globes inside your head. Yeah. That your lids are. And then the more covering. they look that way, the steeper that angle gets. Yeah. And the narrower the oval gets. Right. Just something to consider and keep in mind. Yeah. Um, as always, whenever I do these, I recommend there's a, a playlist on YouTube that um, the YouTuber Cynix has called Anatomy Quick Tips. And he's got videos for like every body part where he goes over like how to look at them, how to break down their shapes, how to simplify them and how to render them. Super helpful videos. Mm -hmm. If you want like the basics in a pretty quick format that allows you to like, I know watching those videos, several of them like snapped things into place for me Yeah, where I was like, oh, that's so easy. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know to think of it that way. So highly recommend it's S I N I X Cynix anatomy quick tips. Um, let's move on to the next piece, huh? Yeah. Great job yeah, again. I don't, Cat I don't have any notes on like color or anything. No, I don't have any notes on color. I think the color looks really nice. Yeah, I think the rendering is really, really pretty. I like the the combination of hard and soft brushes to to make these effects. Yeah, nice highlights, nice shadows, nice gradients. Yeah. And again, I think those that shoes looks are, lovely. They're dope. Okay, next piece. Let's see what we got. What we got. Uh, this one is from Xander. These are the main characters for a comic I'm planning. I'd love to hear any kind of advice slash critique. You got it. You got it. Let's grab this here. Ooh. And we'll make it kind of big here to look at. So we got two characters here. Look at all those rendered spheres in the background. There's a lot of rendered spheres. I like it. It seems very otherworldly. Yeah. Um, I also like you got a very nice difference in like poses that sort of tell uh, tell us about the characters. You've got like this person in front with like the confident hands on hips. You got this person behind with more of a quizzical expression. And even like the fingers that are like, yeah, she's um, doing the are you sure you want to be doing that is that <laughs> is that what you want to be doing and he's like yeah or there i don't know yeah. um and then i was just pulling back up the chat sorry yeah so i like that i think there are some issues with anatomy and perspective that might be they're both ladies yeah okay. they're both ladies okay good yeah. to know good to know that might be um, like a good thing to address like right off the bat. Because I feel like we've got different perspectives like indicated than mm -hmm. what we're seeing. Because we got one perspective like here, like these feet sort of lead towards a vanishing point along with this angle of the head. To like a vanishing point over here but then like her feet are going like towards like a different angle kind of a steeper angle up this way mm -hmm. and then her shoulders too aren't go like her shoulders are angling down toward the same vanishing point you established for her but then hers are different I know she's like leaning to the side, but there are things to, to keep in mind. You want to make sure they're, they're both pointing towards the same vanishing points. And also the, uh, the environment itself needs to reflect that as well. Um, I know that this back part is like, cause they're in space or something. So this back part doesn't have to reflect that because it's like at a different plane. Yeah. Um, but the, the ground that they're on. I know they're like on like a small planet, but or what looks to be a small planet. Yeah, you can see the curve of it. So can't be too big. 
but I think with the perspective the way it is, it would have to be like a little different to make sense. And like with this ship is sort of not operating on any of the planes. It's going like off this way. Yeah, I think it's just a, some mixed up perspective a little bit. Um, I would try putting down like some perspective lines before you start and then trying to like adhere to those a bit more so that things just have a bit more of that like logical feel. Because I think it's also getting in the way of like the scale a little bit the the perspective issues because it kind of looks like both of the characters are really big compared to compared to the ship and like the ship is supposed to be further in the background so maybe you've got like you know you could put a vanishing point back here and then if you like operated from that you could get their scale a little bit a little bit better Mm -hmm. I just think start with like one vanishing point or two vanishing mm -hmm. points and then like adhere to those rules um, as you go. And I think that'll, because if we followed like a one point perspective from the ship, like the horizon line behind the ship, then like the lady in front would need to be a little bit bigger. So she's going to be, you know, her feet will be like here, stand in this way. And then the lady behind her would need to be a little smaller as she recedes. And this is like, you know, super rough. I'm just showing like an example of how the perspective would work. And then the ship is like back here, further away. And it just kind of lets you see how everything relates to each other in space. Yeah. So you know the, the relative sizes of everything. All right, I think that's that's the main thing I have. And then other than that, I see an anatomy. I think her anatomy is pretty good, the lady in front. Um, I think her balance is maybe a little off. Like I think her, with the way she's standing, we're just gonna sketch it out here. I think this leg would probably be further back. These are things that you'll you'll kind of learn to eyeball if you just do a lot of gesture drawing, figure drawing. Um, I think she'd need to be leaning a bit further back in order to be standing up straight and not like falling over. What do you think, Nathan? Yeah, I agree. I agree with this. Although it is, I mean, again, I I uh, I do kind of like the effect. I don't know if it's intentional. That's that's the the issue. Is like it's 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 hard to tell whether or not it's intentional because like there is sort of like a like a wobbly feeling to everything. Uh, like the with the perspective being all different and like the the angles that they're standing like for sure. Uh, so if that's what you're going for. But if if not, then yeah, I think you could you could make them look a little more sturdy. Yeah, I think so. And yeah. then I think you can like, you know, once you nail it down sturdy, then you can play with it if you want to make it a little more a little more wobbly. Yeah. Uh, and I think we got this leg over here I'm trying to figure out a bit as well. So if she's, if her torso is turned this way, then it looks like it's maybe like twisting a bit. And then we got this leg going. Yeah. I think it's a little too far over. Her leg would need to be really long to reach it. Just make sure to do your, uh, your construction, I would say, before like drawing the characters. Get, get all your construction straight without the clothes on first. Yeah. I think that's always a good idea. Because then maybe her torso is like a little short. A short torse. 
But yeah, just like figure drawing and gesture drawing practice will help with that. You can use like, you know, line of action or uh, there's a YouTube channel I really like called New Masters Academy. And they've got a playlist of like timed figure drawings where they'll give you poses from like the same person with increasing time spans. So you'll like do some 30 second ones and some one minute ones some two minute ones and some five minute ones and then end on like a big 10 minute one. And, um, those are super helpful, um, for that kind of thing. I've been working on those lately a bit myself and you, you start seeing benefits straight away. Yeah. Um, what you think, Nathan, you got any notes? I think, yeah, like the, um, the perspective and the construction, I think, are the two, the two big things um, to work on. Because I, I like these designs a lot. I like the, the, the differences in, in color and the outfits and the difference in like their, their stances and facial expressions and. Yeah, for and sure. Like they, like in terms of like character design, I, I like these characters a lot. Um, uh, yeah, I think you so got yeah. good storytelling in there in their poses and designs, which is really nice. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's jump to the next one, huh? Cause we do have actually quite a few, so I'm going to try to let's get, let's get on through there to get on through. Uh, the next one is from dread futures. Let's copy this. They were going for like a Hades like style which I think they did a, a really good job on. Mm. But we're going to see yeah. if we can't uh, figure out w how they could get it even closer. They said, since the gang has done lessons on style duping style breakdowns, I'd love any critique on my attempts at super giant slash Hades character art. What parts of the style are missing? What could be paired back or dialed in or anything else? Um, yeah, so I think what we do for this one is we pull up some Hades art. And we just look. Yeah. Because I think with our fresh eyes, it'll be easy for us to spot differences. Okay. Images, Hades. Let's find some good, a good example here of one of the characters. I'm just picking which character we want to do because mm -hmm. I like them all. Is that's the, the, that's the thing. <clears throat> Among other things, the Hades designs, you look at them and you think, Ooh, I like that. Ooh, I like that. I like, look. I like that. I like looking at it. All right. We'll just take this one of, um, what's his name? Dionysus. Yeah. We will compare the Dionysus. More like Dionysus ass. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Yes. <laughs> we can't even see his ass, but I bet it's nice. I bet it's nice just based on the rest of them. Okay, so let's look at these two and we'll compare. I think I'm going to make, let's make him a little bigger and we'll compare to like some of these that we can see here. Okay. So what am I noticing right off the bat is that Hades art, you did a really good job with like the rendering style, I think. Yeah. Like you got like the heavy, like, you know, dark spots, like the heavy blacks, the highlights. You did a great job on like the metal bits, like this bracelet oh, and yeah. stuff. That stuff looks awesome. Yeah. And the way that like the, the highlights and the shadows, there's always sort of, or usually there's like a, a different color sort of separating them as well. Yeah. It's like a slightly more saturated color. Totally. Like these like um, pink highlights here. 
Yeah, or the greens on the face and the yeah, like those those are all really good. Yeah, I think the color work is excellent. I think uh, it's gonna be my first my first time saying it on the stream. I think you could have pushed the poses a little bit more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think the poses and the expressions, the facial expressions, yeah. are like that's like the only places like I think your rendering is on point and then the poses and expressions could be a little bit enhanced. There's like a there's like a looseness to the 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 posing in Hades. I feel yes. like I mean Dionysus is a good example, but I feel like a lot of the because they're like they're gods, they're immortal beings. There's just sort of like a, a relaxed nature about them. Yeah, uh, a lot of the time they have like a confidence like, to their pose. They're they're adorned with all of these bits, but it's like they're they're not weighing on them. Like those grapes look look so light, and their poses you know? all tell us something. You see the pose, and you know the character. Like yeah. you see this Dionysus in this like relaxed sitting back pose, one arm up, other hand clutching like a beverage. And with this freaking like sexy drunk look on his face. Yeah. You're like, this dude is drunk and sexy. And he's yeah. also like carefree. He doesn't care what's going on. Um, and he's got just like a, an easy confidence about him. Let's like pull up some other ones from the game. Let's see, what about like Hades? Let's look at Artemis. I think Artemis has a really cool pose. Let's copy that, put it in. And you'll see that the poses are always like, they're sort of at, um, there's lots of bend and turn and angle to them. Yeah, they're doing the thing I talked about in the first drawing. Yeah, they like, absolutely are. And like the only example, like it's, she's not doing that with her forearm and that indicates like the weight of the bow she's holding. Like she needs her arm so straight. Yeah, but even though the arm she... is straight, the hand is still out Yeah, at this angle to give it like dynamism. And then this forehand, this foreground hand, like you said, is is bent as well almost looking like she's offering you something um which she is in the game she's like yeah. offering her power but her pose like speaks of there's, there's someone so much who movement. is slinking you know someone who's like stealthy like a hunter yeah like you can imagine someone moving quietly through the brush uh like this so I think one thing you could work on is is trying to make sure that your poses are like telling the story of the characters. And I think some of the ones you have are doing better than others. I feel like this one gives me some personality. Yeah. We've got like sort of a cockiness. She's almost got like a listening pose going on. Like uh, there's like a calm collected cockiness here. But then I feel like, she whoops. Even, she doesn't even have her eyes open. She's just listening. Yeah. But then like this guy, I get less information from the pose about like what yeah. sort of guy he is. I know he's, he's a guy serious. with a staff. He's a serious magic guy. Uh, and then this, this fella is like drawing a sword. And so that gives an indication that he's like a battle, a battle fella. But I think let's just do some like quick sketches of like how maybe we could push the poses a bit. Because looking at this guy right here, which he's kind of got a cocky demeanor and sort of a cocky yeah. pose, but I think he could be like, like leaning back even more. You know, like get him, get him back like this. Just, just push it a bit. Yeah. Think about the, uh, the silhouette. You can get like sort of the strong back muscles and like the chest going. And then maybe he's like, you know, pulling on his, it's like pulling on his collar here. 
sort of shoulder belt or whatever. His shoulder yeah, belt. Stick, you can stick that arm out. Yeah. Yeah. Turn yeah. turn the torso a little more. Tilt the back a little more. Pop out that chest. Because all their poses in Hades are like kind of kind of extra. And then maybe he's also like, you know, looking down at you a bit. Yeah. If this is, I'm just like inventing what I think the character is like and like how I would do it if I were drawing a character like that. I would want like a really confident pose and then a look that says like, like a sneer that says like, I'm, I'm better than you, dude. And kind of a down angled face. Those are not the eyes. They kind of look like two little eyes. Me. <laughs> 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 Love it if there was one character in Hades with tiny little eyes like that. <laughs> I'm yeah. wanting like a like a sneer. Something like this, maybe. Also, I think that just um and I mean you're you're kind of showing this in the in the redraw, but I think that for me the head feels a little big compared to the body. Oh yeah, uh, I, I actually agree with that as well. I, I feel like in Hades, I feel like they've got they've got real sort of like, in, in addition to being expressive bodies, there's just like, I don't know the, they take up a lot of space, with the with the bodies and their accoutrement. Like, feel free to give give the bodies of your characters space to, to breathe, and show off their stuff. So, I mean, this is obviously like not in your style. This is in my style, but yeah. I hope that it like, you know, it makes sense in terms of like what I'm getting at here. And then, cause the Hades style is pretty exaggerated too. Yeah. Like I think the collar would be like, you know, bigger. Going around. There's like all those like large elements. Cause you have some good, like these are cool designs, but yeah, you could definitely push the like <laughs> the looks the so collar. Easy. He's got two, two knives visible. Why not three? I'm trying to make what? this dude look less goofy, but you get the, you get the freaking idea. Yeah. He's got like glowy eyes and like dots on his head. He's got magic. He's got knives. Yeah, there's like an amount of, uh, there's just like a level of movement in the, uh, in the poses. Like it feels like you've caught them all like mid doing something. Yeah, maybe this guy's like, you know, leaning more forward. I'd make that guy like thicker. Oh just yeah, make, like just broad make him it, up. Just broad him up. Just make that armor. Cause like you've got to remember he's, he's strong underneath the armor. The armor's on top of, like the armor's gonna widen him up. Yeah, maybe he's like, you know, like he's in the process of like unsheathing this, this blade. Yeah. You can really like get him coming forward with it. Cause you can still have the like, the arm sort of crossed in front sort of look like he's he's sort of closed off and reserved but i i think you make him just like really lean into this sort of like tank tanky look you you've given him uh this is a bad drawing but it's it's to illustrate a point <laughs> normally when i'm doing poses i don't have to do them in like 17 seconds flat so no do it better oh okay come on i'll just do it <laughs> can better. You do it better can you do it better for for all the people watching but yeah, I think if you just go for like a little bit more pose, more expression, because like the expressions yeah. on their faces are kind of mild also. And I mean, I think like Dionysus has such a convincing expression. Artemis has a mild expression, but she's more of a mild character. Maybe if we look at someone like... Um, What's uh like Poseidon? 
Show me Poseidon. Poseidon's got a great pose. Oh, yeah. Like, this is like such a cocky, lounging pose of like someone who's like, it gives you the feeling of someone who laughs a lot, but then also has like a bad temper. Mm hmm. Like when he's around, you're always a little, he's like, he seems casual now, but I feel like he could annihilate me if he wanted to. Yeah. Um, I would recommend honestly, just like pulling up these poses, redlining them and um, trying to draw like similar poses to these just as practice. I think that would be helpful. Yeah. Cause you definitely, yeah. I think the, the rendering style, you, you basically got it. Yeah. And, agreed. Yeah, the, the sort of, posing and characterization is is where you can can do a little do a little more practice totally you're like really close on the rendering which i think is really cool because that would be the hardest part for me so yeah that's uh that's the recommendation thank you for your submission let's get the next one We got one from Messy Zandrew Burt, which I, I really like this little guy. I feel like I don't have, don't have too much to say on this one, but probably a little bit to say. I'll let something you know if it's too much. This fella. Very cute. He's so cute. A yeah, frog. very cute and very um, like the pose is really good. The character is really good. I think the only part that like strikes me is that I'm losing detail in the colors. Mm -hmm. I think it's all a little too dark, like a little too samey color wise, mm -hmm. which um, maybe we can do. How do you put it in black and white on <laughs> change tones to grayscale? What the heck? Oh, yeah. Just this feature process the image. Just do it. Just do it. Process it. It's processing. I didn't really expect it to have to process this long. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I think the background colors are too close in tone to the skin colors. Hmm would be what I would say. Yeah. It's like, this is like a pretty dark gray, as you can see bottom left there. And then like this gray is like almost the exact same. Yeah. These are a little lighter, but they're not far enough. I think the background should be lighter and brighter if the, if it's going to be this dark in the foreground, but you also might be able to like, the highlights definitely help. I think more highlights would help even more. Yeah. I'm just going to make like a, well, I would make a soft light layer, but the cameras are in the way. I can't even get to that layer mode. There we go. All right. This will just be as an My example. Cause I think these, um, these clothing folds are getting lost. You could maybe hit like some of these with some, do them lighter instead of darker. Oh, sure. Just so that they get like seen. Cause I'm losing the black line work in the darkness of the character. Could maybe get away with some, uh, some rim lighting could help. Make him Ooh, pop out a bit more. Yeah. Like that. You got some rim lighting on the hair. I would even push it even further. I think it just makes him stand out a bit more from the background. Something like that. Yeah. I feel like if we compare, it just makes him pop. Make him pop. Just make him pop. Pop that frog. Just pop him. Pop. Pop the frog. Just pop his ass. <laughs> Don't pop his ass. Just pop his ass. Okay. Um, I think it looks great though. Otherwise, I really love the rendering you did on the the three like hair spikes. 
Yeah. Like you got the bounce light from the glow on the nose. The lighting's like reflecting the surroundings. I think that looks super nice. The eyes look super nice too. I think the only issue is one of um, just needing to be a little more tonal difference from foreground to background. Because the pose is great, character's great, rendering is great. That's all I got for you. Next one. I I either I'd either make the the fingers bigger or make the sort of lump part that's supposed to indicate the like the fingers curling over a little smaller. Oh yeah, totally. That's my only thing. Because I kind I kind of like the little fingies, but they look like too little compared to how big the So we could either go bigger fingers. Just like slightly, yeah. Or smaller lump. Bigger fingers or smaller lump. Take your pick. Just so that it's relatively makes sense hand wise. I would agree with that. But that's just a, that's this a, hand's pretty tiny. That's a nitpick. Yeah. There's a well he's going like Meh. Yeah. It's you can't even see it. It's coming it's coming back. It's coming back. Coming back at you. Yeah, great work, uh, Zandrew Burt. And we got another one coming in. We got another one. Another and even one. Even another one. Another one. This one is from Et the Kraken or Eddie the Kraken. Et Etty? Et? Et? Et Etty? E T T E? What do you think? Ette? Who, who knows? Probably someone. It's pronounced Luffy. Luffy? Luffy the yeah, Kraken? Luffy. Luffy the Kraken. We got a cool Ooh. archery pose here. Yeah. And then let's read what they wrote. My most recent D&D character, Elisade. I would appreciate any critique. All right. All right. I'm going to say the thing. You got to push that pose. Yeah, push it. You got to push that pose because you got action lines here and this pose does not bespeak of action at the current moment. Your anatomy is really good. Yeah. I feel like this is one of those examples of like you've, you've like studied anatomy and you're, you're pretty good at proportion and anatomy, but now it's time to break those rules. And just for the sake of making it look more uh, like action packed. And listen, I've been there. If you can make it look like someone is convincingly holding a bow and arrow, like, congrats. For sure, that's like, hard. I'm, I'm yeah. I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want to push it. I just want it to. I just want <laughs> just it to want like it to function. Look. I just yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did a great job with like the foreshortening on the hand. Yeah. I'm just doing like an anatomy check here to see if anything like jumps out at me, but I think you did a did a good job. Nice thick thighs on this front. You, you did the thing that tells me people have like studied some legs, which is that the the thigh part of the leg, like it it goes out, it bows out this way when you go down into yeah. like the calf shin. Yeah. When the leg makes this shape, I know someone has looked at looked into some leg study. Yeah. You know about legs. You know about legs. Oh, Great this person job knows on the feet. Knows about legs. Yeah, everybody who's drawn shoes on their character has done an excellent job. That's a common through line. The yeah, shoes and boots. Good. I feel like all your facial great. proportions are good. Yeah, gen genuinely great job on that, on that stuff. Uh, now we're just gonna do some. We're gonna look into into pushing it a bit. Push it. Let me get out my and there's like several ways we could go about this you could either lean i would i would bend them more in one direction so one thing you could do is bend them more this way and then have like really like oh, yeah. foreshorten this arm doing that artemis hunch 
like this hunch yeah hunch them over this way so they're like sort of down like this and then really like pull back this hand oh yeah really send it backwards so it's like jacob freaking wham this is great this is a great pose thank you i've been i've been working on uh, gesture drawing a lot lately that's awesome um, and then, because then you can like curve this part back this way. You can go further. This is to go even further beyond. Plus ultra. You know, and have like the leg coming like out this way. The other leg like back like this, maybe. Probably be. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Like that. That's like a, a bit of a push. You could push him the other way. I would definitely foreshorten it more. I think that's going to give you a lot more action. Yeah. Make that, that front hand huge. Yeah. Make the front hand huge. Let's try doing like a back bend. If they're going like this. And that's also a fun trick because then you make that hand big enough, you can cover up any part you don't want to draw. And then this is my tips be... are all about how to do less work, <laughs> how to not draw. Yeah. And then once again, with like this, this kind of is nice. This type of pose because you you have to like flex the back muscles to pull the bowstring back, mm -hmm. and this gets that look of like, oh, I'm pulling this thing the heck back. And I'm about to unleash on your ass. So yeah, bow here, string, string pulled way back like this. Big arrow. My internet connection is unstable. It's only ever unstable when I use Zoom. I wonder why. Is that a coincidence? It may. It sounds seems like a coincidence to me. Such a weird coincidence. Maybe like something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Could be good. You could kick this leg out still if you wanted. You could have the other leg going behind. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I don't know something if that's good like form for for archery, but it is if you're like suddenly you know there's spinning such, around. It's such a a pro archer it doesn't matter if you got to like whirl yeah. around and shoot someone yeah um so these are just a couple examples like like i said before i think your your anatomy and your proportions are really good which is harder i think to nail yeah um so all i would recommend you do is uh is start breaking your rules a little bit for the sake of style yeah and I think, uh, much like the pose, the expression could be pushed if you're about to like shoot someone. Yeah. I don't know like what this type of character, maybe she's very like peacefully shooting someone. Yeah, we'll go to sleep. But we could get like a, you know, like a mouth like, ah, hey, I'm shooting you. I'm shooting you bow. over here. What's the nose look like? Sort of like this. Get like a like a snarly going, like ah! Oh my god! Look out for this some, arrow! Get some teeth with some gums, like frick you! I'm about to blast your ass. You're getting blasted, dude. This might not be like the vibe of your character. It's just, I'm, just, always, just I'm always saying this in, in my D&D &D sessions. <laughs> I'm going to blast your ass. I'm going to blast your ass. You're dead. You're freaking done. <laughs> this is like oh my a god. This is like Jacob. a wild. <laughs> ah! Ah! I'm not even looking where they're shooting. <laughs> you know, this is probably not like the exact pose you want. But this no. is this is an example, yeah, of something you could do. I mean, you could push it the other direction, make them look like so calm, and like 
Oh yeah, you could yeah, go with like mean? ultimate serenity. Yeah, just like be at peace now. You have been blasted. Yeah, I don't even know how I would. It's like half lit it. Yeah, it's like <laughs> sort of a half lit look. Like, I'm going to sleep. This is boring. You interrupted my nap, so now you must be blasted. Well, let's do a um. Get the get the eyes balls in first, then we half lid. Yeah. <laughs> This is oh, me? No, it's good. <laughs> like just so casually, like yeah. Hmm. I also think it's funny to juxtapose that face on one of those um, poses you drew. Well, let me get like a mouth here. Yeah, they got that little. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is not like exactly right, but again, I'm I'm going fast here. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> the mouth is really big. <laughs> yeah, let's move the face over. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah you're you're dead yeah dead it's not even at the right angle to do this but it's funny <laughs> <laughs> just like whipping around a full 180 turn and just like mm. Mm. anyways well, you should have rolled higher on your stealth check, I guess. That's it for you. I, I freaking got you. I freaking got you. Rolled too good. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's it for this one. I think you did a great yeah. job. Just, just push them posies. Push them posies. Uh, okay, next one. We got from Servetier, or is it Servetier? It's probably not Servetier. I might have Servetier. Could be Servetier. This one they said, a recent commission for a friend. I feel as though I wasn't able to accomplish certain things. So any input on how I can improve in the future would be lovely. Oh boy. That's what we're here for. I don't want to send it in Discord again. <laughs> Back to the Discord. I want to put it here. Ooh. So we got a cool character here, Moody Nighttime Peace. Yeah. Okay, let me bring my chat back up. Y'all are so good at outfits. Okay, I'm seeing a uh, Zervatir. Is that how you say it? With like a Z? Zervatir? Zervatir? In any case, this is a very cool piece. I love what you did with the outfits, like Nathan said. I feel like your like folds and stuff are really cool. And like yeah. the ruffles. And the ruffles here. Yeah. I think uh, two things I notice straight off the bat when I look at it. Number one, the uh, perspective of the character is not the same as the perspective of the trees. You got the trees are all looking like we're looking up towards the sky from the ground. I guess it depends if she's floating. If if we're laying on the ground and she's floating, then it doesn't. Yeah, then it is correct. And she could be because she's like mystical in some way. She's got like bat iconography. Yeah. Iconography. So maybe she's maybe she's just a vampire who can float. Vampires can float. Vampires right? can float. So if she's um, floating, that's fine. If she's floating, then ignore me. If she's not floating, then we have like a, um, let's do some perspective lines. We got something like maybe this. Just trying to follow the trees. 
They're going She's like not up floating, here. floating, but is a vampire. Not floating, but is a vampire. <laughs> that tree's going like up here. So they're all meeting, you know, somewhere vaguely up that way. Yeah. So you would definitely want to make the character, and this is a difficult pose, a difficult angle to pose. Uh, so I, I understand. Just, yeah, you could just change the trees. You might could change be, the trees too. Might be easier to change the trees <laughs> than change the pose. But if you wanted it to be like the character, um, you would definitely meet, meet in the middle sort of want to have. Let's get a few more perspective lines in here. I need more so I can see the angles. So the most broke ass perspective anyone's ever drawn. <laughs> just, just keep drawing lines vaguely going in the same direction. <laughs> well, you would just want it to be like so her her body was generally going up. When's receding the, at the top. When's the Spencer class? Is that happening tomorrow? Is it the 25th? I've forgotten the date of it. Well, um, you said but it you, so many times on that stream. You just want to like, I'm just going to do some basic shapes for you here. You would want to work on the shape so that all of your like cylinders are upward facing cylinders, right? You can ask. It is tomorrow. Okay, cool. So you can, you can ask about this perspective technique. So something like this. Oh yeah. And and working on like a lot of cylinders will will help you to understand better as you go and like to kind of get a sense for what's hidden like the shoulders would be like down here based on this view kind of like back like this. And you got this here and then like the arms are going to get slightly bigger as they go. Yeah. It's not like, you know, too crazy, but if you if you know like your general anatomy, like you know that the elbows, if they're by the sides, should always kind of line up with the waist, you can still make the proper things line up and kind of like fudge your way, fudge your way into it. And like as it gets closer, so this kind of has the, the idea of like, and this is not your same pose, so this is just an example. Um, and then the character is going to be looking down too. So, you know, something like this. You know, not not exactly, but you get you get the idea of what you I'm going for idea. here. You get the idea. You get the gist. Something at this sort of angle. Let me move all this over. Because then it will match your tree's background mm -hmm. if that's what you're going for. Because then you'll have the trees. You'll have the trees. I said you'll have the trees. You'll have the trees. You know, coming up are. like this. Yeah. And it will look like they're in the same yeah. sort of situation in the moon behind the head, which I really do like as a compositional element. Probably bring the trees a little lower like you did. Yeah. So it frames the body and then leaves sort of the moon. Could even go for like a cool like circular cloud look. Really like highlight that head. Yeah. Um, so that's what I would do like angle wise. Uh, Serenity said, I had struggled with the perspective and it changed many times, so that's likely why the trees ended up such a different angle. Yeah, that'll happen. It's really difficult to nail down. Um, but I think you did a good job on the character pose, like absent the perspective difference. Yeah, it's cool. It's very dynamic. Like the pose is very nice. You got like a cool angle. What's uh You got like the back angled back, which I like. And then, you know, you can always like push it further if you wanted to, like make the torso come a little further back, the bottom of the torso. Yeah. Everything can always be pushed further until it's pushed too far. 
but I like what you did with it. Um, the only other thing I noticed that I wanted to talk about was, uh, there's some, I think tone issues here as well. And this yeah, is a common problem gonna... with, um, rendering like darker skin tones in dark environments. Mm -hmm. Whereas like if you're, if you're rendering lighter skin tones, you want to focus on the shadows. But if you're rendering darker skin tones, you want to focus on the highlights because that's, what's going to come out more. Um, so I think the face just needs more like highlights on it to bring it out. Cause you're, you're losing like detail in the nose and the mouth. Um, so we will just do a quick and sorry, were you saying something, Nathan? Yeah, I was just going to note cause like in, in this image, the only like light source we can see is the moon. Yeah. Uh, which would make her very backlit which I think you could use like uh, th there's the thing about like using your your light and shadow j to like indicate form but then also using it to um, indicate like composition yes you, you did like a very sort of intense very detailed rendering on the hair and on the skirt which is like so that's that's where my eyes get drawn and then the the clouds are like basically as bright as the moon i would maybe like lower the brightness on the clouds and really sort of push that like rim lighting on the um on the figure in the foreground so like you you have like all of these nice highlights and shadows but i would i would do like sort of a a compositional layer of um of light and shadow as well to like push the eye towards what you want them to focus on because like right now it's like the the clouds and the moon and the whites of the uh, of the outfit all sort of like blend together and then the the face kind of gets washed out um, yes, I agree with you. I'm going to try to like highlight what you're saying. Uh, maybe we get like a multiply layer going. I won't be able to like fully show, but yeah, I think if we let's come like down here, let's get a big soft brush. So like the clouds should be pushed back a bit. Yeah. And like, you know, focus on where the moon would be hitting the clouds. Mm -hmm. And then we need to lose a bit of this detail down here too. The underside of the trees can be nice and dark. And then that's not what we want. Knock some of this back. And then like big on the the rim lighting yeah is that what you were saying yeah and i think that would that would just push the foreground separate from the background a little bit yeah i totally agree you know we could do like something like this and we don't want to get too much detail like down there yeah And this is going to be kind of a rough way to show it, but yeah, I would definitely, I would agree with Nathan that I would go darker and then, and then focus on these like highlights where the moon, the moon's light would be hitting. Yeah. Yeah. I think just generally, you know, whenever you're feeling something get lost, Think about making a harsher contrast. It's always good to do. It's like the front of the hair is probably a bit too bright. Just like darken some of that up. Not, I wouldn't do it like this if I were doing no, it. No, no, but like just to <laughs> sort of get the idea. To get the idea because things behind the face are going to be or behind the hair, the underside of the hair. And then you bring things back up. It's like a constant game of 
like push and pull push and pull yeah but yeah like the the the, the thing you got to remember is like you're in control like you can even if that's not how it would actually look in the moonlight you know or whatever sort of lighting you have you're you're allowed to um sort of cheat certain things if it serves the overall like composition of the piece yeah it's encouraged to cheat be it's a all, cheater because it's cause it's all lying yeah we're you're, just lying you're lying about these lines being a person they're not so yeah if you like you know you're feeling part of your your drawing is getting lost part of or like your eyes are being drawn to parts of the drawing that you don't necessarily want the focal point to be and you know like it doesn't the focal point doesn't have to be the face but typically if it's like a character portrait you want people to like focus on the face and have that pop out yeah usually get some like highlights on the eyes i mean the, the eyes do have highlights but you know what i'm saying yeah yeah just making it pop a little bit as we can here it's not like you know and the issue is i could get lost in this and doing this yeah exactly for the rest of the day just like pushing and pulling elements right it's hard to do with like an already finished piece also yeah, i don't have to layers like to work with but these. it's like but yeah i think yeah we can you can see the idea that we're getting at here compared if you compare the the sort of two um and then like i'd brighten up other elements as well so that yeah. it's not such a dark composition but this is uh this is an example i can never get to my freaking layer modes where's my where's my color dodge it's dodging you. It's dodging me. Could maybe like that's well not like that. <laughs> not like that, but not like that. Surely not like that. You can bring stuff back out with the color dodge. Reduce stuff and then bring it back out, make it glow a little bit. Yeah, just like consider the light source you've set up and then try to make things um, follow that because see then I'm then I'm tempted to to get in here and be like well the trees would have mm -hmm. you know but not, yeah but how much detail do you want on the trees just kind that's of a kinda way cool. to that's kind of cool though like the clouds would have highlight areas on them and then the other parts would be darker and the moon should be bright as hail. Make that even brighter. Yep. It's just fun to experiment with this kind of stuff he's, sometimes. He's messing around. The hand would need some rim lighting on it. Yeah. Something like that, but you'd have to work it from an earlier stage so it doesn't all get lost in the in the shadows. Maybe like um, what I would probably do in a situation like this is have a secondary light source. What goes really well with purples is oranges. Oh, sure. Um, you oh, can yeah. have just like an the unseen. Because yeah, then it, like like some candlelight or something. Yeah, the, the foreground is, is lit in like a completely different tone that'll that'll definitely make it pop from the from the background yeah, and then you can have like you know something like this going on like there's a light source down here somewhere mm -hmm. and this is going to be like so fast and dirty please don't judge please me don't. please don't please don't judge me for this just an example i have to get rid of some of the shadows but I'm a big fan of a, a warm tone secondary light source. Where's those shadows? Let's back some of them off a bit. 
Maybe we make this a hard yeah, light. If, if the yeah, if the implication in the original drawing is that there is a secondary light source, then I would just make that secondary light source a slightly different color light than moonlight, just so that it's not uh everything isn't so samey. Yeah. Then you can get some of this stuff, you know, lit up. Yeah. Anyways, we've been on this piece for far too long. Because I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a really good piece. You did a great job. Yeah, it's a cool um, character. This is just like stuff to think about. Cool vampire girl. Yeah. As you move forwards. Yeah. Uh, let's let's get to the next one here. I uh, just I'm just always I love draw class these kinds of draw class because I just love seeing people share their work and people. Who, who love making art and wanting to um, wanting to improve. I just think that's that's lovely. I agree. All right, we're gonna go Ooh. like like speed mode here. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna I'll, give like uh, one tip for each one. Yeah. Uh, this one came with like a few pieces here, a few pieces that go together. Let's move this out. Like yeah, the thing the thing I I always say is just like the fact that you're you're looking for advice and and looking to improve is already awesome. So this one's from Frightened Furry. They said one of my drawings for Funguary I did. Overall, I'm not sure how well everything reads, and was just wondering how I could improve it overall. Uh, it's definitely a bit on the busy side. Yeah, I think. Like this, I like this. This yeah. is really cool, but it's because you have all of this busy area that forms this cool like fungus person and then this blank area. So your eye is only drawn to the busy area. Um, then this piece, which seems like it was like you've overlaid the two. This piece, I think it's it suffers from too many lines. Cause like you've got a cool like composition here, like the woman in the foreground, the altar, this thing, but you've put lines like everywhere. I think I would try to make like some of these areas just like, like black, yeah. like put enough lines that it's like, you know, blacked out, which you can do with like pencil and pen. It just like is time consuming but many people do this. Just remember you're trying to draw the audience's eye to a focal point. Yeah, like if you're gonna put lines in, I think consider the direction of the lines Yeah, as well. Because like the lines on the floor are, they're, they're, pulling, they're pulling my eye in. And if like every, if, if all of the, the sort of scritchy lines like that in the piece were all going like towards the same point, I think it would have a, a different effect. Yeah. But already just like darkening those things in helped, I think. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Nathan. Um, I think one thing you could do as well is like put less lines on. You, we're looking for like contrast here, right? Yeah. So like, because you want to draw attention to the woman. Composition and uh, focal points. We could put a little bit less lines on her so that she stands out more as like blank space kind of draws you in and then like it gets darker as it goes back could be cool give me a layer multiply so like this could be darker back here yeah and then and you know all of a sudden you've got all this depth a little lighter with the mushrooms here and then this is like you know lit up and then the woman is lit up and you can get this effect with lines because i know you're not working digitally um just put the density of lines in the darkest part make them very close together this is going to seem obvious, <laughs> probably is obvious, but, um, 
yeah, you can just like do a lot of lines in the back, like hatch it and make them all go the same direction or different directions in like patches. If you want to get like a cross hatching look, you can do something like this and like make that this background. And uh, just, I think if you work on your line density, you'll get, uh, you know, a much stronger piece that, that reads a lot more clearly. I do like the messiness of it. I think it it like is appealing with the kind of horror nature of the piece. Just aim yeah. the messiness. You towards, can aim the mess. Uh, towards, towards getting some clarity for your audience. Bless the mess. Bless the mess. Uh, okay, next one. We got one from Yes, I'm Bill. Got a little, looks like Your a orc, bill? like a orc guy. Yes, I'm Bill said, yes, I know it's flawed, but I physically cannot understand what about it is. I'm excited for draw class. We're excited to have you. Yeah. So we got a fella here. And this little guy that says, I've spent six days on this art is pain and suffering. Yes, it is. It's true. This it is incredibly true. is. Um, okay. So you can't understand what's flawed about it. I honestly think you've done a pretty good job here um, from yeah. like a construction standpoint. Where's my pencil? I think uh, really what you just need to work on is, and I'm gonna sound like a broken record here, um, anatomy and, and gesture. Cause um, right now we've got this torse This torso here, which kind of comes down and he's kind of a squirt shaped dude. Characters are usually like what? Eight heads tall. This guy's sure. more like five heads tall, five which heads. is fine. It's like a stylistic choice. Yeah. But even still the arms, the elbows of the arms should reach down to like the mid torse and the hands should reach down to mid thigh. So the arms are a little bit short. You got the hands like coming down here. And then this is the pelvis. And then, you know, you could lengthen the legs as well if you wanted to, or if it's stylistic to have them be stubbier, that's fine. I'm going to lengthen them just a bit. Then the feet, I like what you did with the feet shapes. And a head up here. So something like, if you're going for something similar, this would be like a slightly more anatom anatomically correct version. Yeah. While still keeping the proportions that you've set up. And then if you wanted to go even further with it, he kind of looks like a sad or confused guy. He's doing that stance where he's like, not sure what to do with his hands. Yeah. You can push the pose <laughs> a little there. a little more. Just showed up at the party and realized I don't know anyone. Yeah. Like I thought my friends were going to be here. We've all the been host, there. But, but they're busy. So I'm just going to sort of... It's like we hunch the shoulders a bit more. Make the head looking a little more down. You know, something like this. Legs are like a little more bent. Yeah. And there's just like, you know, a looseness in the way Jacob is uh is drawing this this pose, which it just sort of comes from practice. Yeah, I think your main thing you need is just to draw more. Yeah, like looking at yours, yeah, I you know, I think that you spent you spent six days on this one drawing. I would spend six days drawing a bunch of poses next yeah, time, for sure. Uh, and and don't and don't worry about any individual one, and focus more on just like noticing sort of patterns in in how in how poses do, and how and how bodies do. 
and then and then come back and try and and spend time focusing on on just one pose again after doing that and see if you notice a a difference i completely agree it's much better to get just like a higher volume at the start um and you're going to be like slower than you know someone who's got more experience yeah and that's okay and that's fine the the important thing is that's, like try to judge to yourself as, as little as possible and try to just like do get a lot of input from like reference and from gesture drawing practice like you need to put a lot into your brain and then also train up that drawing hand to get like the physical act of drawing yeah um a little better because you're, you're still in the stage right now where like the physical act of drawing is hampering you and that will go away with time you'll get like more confident in your line work and stuff so just keep just keep on doing it that's really the only thing you need to do i just wanted to add this kind of hair i like it yeah that's good advice nathan i feel like i'm always it's always hard to like try and give people the advice hey draw more right but I think when it's like paired with the specific advice of like draw more things worse yeah, and, and spend less time on each individual thing if you're just practicing and then like occasionally, you know, take the time to like do like a whole piece and see how you've improved. So maybe if you're drawing like five days a week ambitiously, I'll say this. <laughs> if you're drawing five days a week, spend four days doing fast stuff fast drawing from reference yeah. and then spend one day doing a piece trying to incorporate what you've uh what you've learned yeah and it, th this comes back to like what what we've talked about on previous draw classes about how like practice is different from like making art um like what what you're doing is is basically exercising mm -hmm. um like by by looking at at poses and trying to replicate them and then moving on um, you know, your goal isn't to perfectly reproduce the, the poses that you're looking at. Your goal is to just get used to like thinking about how you go from looking at something to reproducing it with, with the lines and shapes and, and also just like working on those, just like the, the physical act of doing it. So it's like you're, you're, you're practicing thinking about it. You're practicing doing it. Um, and and what you draw is less important than the act of of doing it. Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, it comes down to repeating and repeating and repeating until you've enforced all these things in your brain and also in your arm. Yeah, um, like the physical part and the mental part just get reinforced over time. Shall we jump to the next one? Yep. Yep. We got some pieces from Harpo here. It said, either one of these I would, I'd love critique on. I'm very proud of them, but I know there's things I can improve on. Color choice, posing, shading, and highlighting. And these are, uh, these are good. I do like these. So we got one here with a bunch of different poses. Ooh, some friends which I love the, the, all the different poses I think are great. Again, the shoe, everyone's so good at drawing shoes. When did everyone get good at drawing shoes? What is happening? What is happening here? <laughs> what is going on? And then we got this cool um, Julia, this painted Julia piece that's done in like oh, a, like a yeah. Lion, Lion Decker style, I think it is. I remember yeah, seeing this Lion one. Decker. Yeah, my favorite. JC that's Lion so Decker. cool. Yeah, which you did an excellent job recreating the... Uh, the shading of the Lion Decker piece. That's awesome. So many good shapes. Uh, okay, so let's, let's jump in here. I think we'll start with, with these ones over here, which I think they're all really, really good. I love that you did all these different poses at different angles. Um, there is a little bit of like pose stiffness though, I think, <laughs> um, is my only thing I would say. And I would recommend, cause you, you clearly have like the knowledge 
of like posing and anatomy and stuff like that. So I think you're, you know, you're ready for like the higher level techniques of, uh, of just loosen it up a bit. Like don't, it's, it's like this shape right here. When I see this on the shoulders of drawings, um, that's just too stiff. It's too stiff of a type of shoulder and shoulders don't really do that exactly. So if you have like the, the turn of a body here and you got, you know, one shoulder lower than the other and the body's like going out this way. And this, this will also be cured by just, um, right, doing this. a lot of reference drawing. Yeah. We're going to just try like something like this. And whenever I give this advice, I'm also talking to myself. I'm oh yeah, like, me too. I'm like, oh, I should be doing this more also. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. So we got like one arm going out this way. And then one arm going, maybe push it like a little more up. You can like go for like a um, a looser interpretation of the the gesture. Since I'm struggling with that one, I'm gonna do a different one. Do a different one. We're gonna go to this fella. There's I like, like a, him. It's like a, a a twist happening. You know, don't be afraid to instead of doing like a boxy shape for the shoulders, do a more like curved shape. Like lower the shoulder down a bit make it a little more curvy and then Curve you can it up. have it going you know more like this a little more of an organic shape if that makes sense yeah And as I'm always saying, don't be afraid to try and like push the poses a little bit. You want us to push the poses? I want you to push the poses. What happened to Jacob? Who are you? <laughs> who is this, this a, guy? Who is this guy? Like you got this jumping guy? Give him a bend him back more. Bend him. Make him really, really jumping. Yeah. Send those legs back like he's doing a volleyball spike. Oh, he's in high cue now. And then also when you're jumping, you know, you get like this sort of floatiness to the, the clothes as well. Right. What if I want to pull the poses? Do not pull the poses. <laughs> not, what are you saying? What, you, know, you can push, but you cannot pull. And then you got yeah. like the hoodie situation here. And like the hoodie comes out more when there's like hands in it. I think you could just in general draw your arms a little longer and draw your heads a little smaller also. I agree with that. I as I as I accidentally illustrated with this pose that yeah. I did. That was just like a a common through line I was noticing. In addition to just making the poses a little bit more um, organic and, and less stiff, I think those those two aspects. You like, typically the note is like, make the legs longer. Um, like I, I know I always make my draw legs too short and sort of like the general rule is like, draw your legs to the point where they feel too long is usually correct because they're just they're longer than you think but your the legs on these characters seem pretty good but the arms seem a little short and the heads seem a little big and if they're wearing a hoodie and they're and they're jumping make that hood it's, it's hood, flopping up it's, it's flopping up it's got that that inertia you know bounce bounce the hood bounce the shapes if there's something that can be like, you know, swing it out, swing it out. But yeah, really good work. I do think Nathan's note about the arms is a very, is a very good one as well. 
The elbow should be, if you're moving the arm straight from this spot here, the elbow should come down to like here. It's kind of like right where your waist cinches. And then you want your, um, maybe a little higher, like right there. Your hand should be at like mid thigh approximately. Arms are a little longer than you think. Because if we look at her arms, they're like coming down to the pocket. But if you think about when someone has their hands in their pockets, their elbows are bent. Which means the arm needs to be a little bit longer so that it could reach the pocket. Yeah. Something like this. Yeah, it's not like too, they're not like, it's just a little bit. Yeah, just a, they're just a little bit short. Yeah. That's so all. that's something to watch out for. All right, let's do the next one. This piece is really cool. <laughs> I don't have any, any issues with this piece. I think you did a great job. Yeah. Let's just enjoy it. Yeah. Okay, next. Who we got here? Blue Yina. Would love critique on either of these. The first is personal art of an OC. The second is a commissioned piece where they asked me to have their characters sleeping by the water. Backgrounds aren't quite my strong suit, but yeah. All right, let's take a look at both. You got a strong suit. So this is the OC, a very Ooh. cool, cool beast. I think you have a, a strength yeah. at drawing animals for sure. You got the poses. Awesome. And then we got design. this piece here. Ooh, a couple of critter friends. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really have any issue with the characters themselves. No. I think you've got They're... like good anatomy forms for like animalistic shapes. I love the way you've combined like mammal and bug. You don't see that a lot. Yeah, really cool. That's like... That's awesome. It's so creative. Uh, I do agree that the background is what needs some work. Yeah. And I honestly think all you need to do is just like use reference for background. Mm -hmm. um, there's like a, let me just find like a, like a picture. I think I can find a picture. Grass and lake. Let's find some grass and a lake. Because <clears throat> there's something that's worth checking out. Just check it out. Here we check go. Check it out. Uh, the image is here. You just can't, you just can't see it. It's, it's freaking here though. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Um, and that is like, there's a, a misconception when like coloring backgrounds that you're like, oh, grass is green, water is blue. It's, it, it is, but it's also kind of not. Right. And, and I think you could, uh, you know, examine from some real photos. This is not a great photo, but it will, it will serve my point well enough. From 2015. Wow. This is from 20, 2015 classic photo. Yeah. But if we compare colors here, the grass is like really in like the yellowy greens. Yeah. And the water is kind of in the gray, the gray Same. blue. And as it gets darker, it's almost like completely gray. Yeah. But the water never leaves. I'm looking, by the way, down here at the color wheel. Yeah. The water never leaves the left half of the color wheel. And if we look over here, you're on like the fully saturated end, which I know it's like a more colorful piece. Yeah. It's like a mystical spring or something. Uh, but I think sense. to get those uh, like harmonious colors, sometimes you need to like examine a real life image and be like, okay, where do these colors actually fall? The grass is kind of in the middle. Sometimes it goes to the right and the water is all on the left of the saturation. And then stylize it as much as you can. Um, 
so that you don't have to like do as much, like draw as many blades because that detract distracts from the focus. Yeah. We'll just try to do like an example here. Do, 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 do. So if we have like, this is like our patch of grass, you want to go like, you know, a little darker. You can like get some bits like this, you know, not like too many, make it like more like larger shapes of, of shadow. And then you want to go like a little brighter, get some that are like this, just a few, not too many. It, it comes back to that thing we we're talking about, about how like you're, you're the, you're, you're in control. You're allowed to decide what details get uh get focus in your piece um so you know you 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 can choose which shadows and which highlights to to focus on depending on where the foreground is where like the character is in the piece and how you want to frame it and and lead the eye around. Absolutely. Well, this is just a sweet little, oh, I like that. And right here, like I'm making the choice, I put in this mid-tone, but it's too close in tone to the green of the bank. So it kind of like blends. So I'm like, okay, well, we'll put some of the lighter parts up against right. that green so that it separates it a bit. And so, you know, you got some of the light there and then we go, we want some of the really dark parts too. So we can get like some of that underneath and then like make some sections of the darker stuff and then go back in with the lighter stuff and go over the top of the darker stuff. And, you know, just make it all kind of like shapey, get some more mid-tone so that it doesn't like distract too much. And then if it like gets too big, you can like push some of it back however you want to do that. Yeah. Make it a little lighter overall, make it a little darker overall. But like, don't, don't hesitate to, to style it and also to color pick like I've been doing to see like what it actually looks like. Cause when you take this, well, you can't take it away cause I did it on the same layer. Oops. When you take this away, I said, <laughs> <laughs> when you take that away your eyes still your eyes look at this as like oh that's green grass and blue water yeah and it doesn't have to be so saturated for it to register as that like these look almost the same your brain just like fills it in but this doesn't look as like it's competing for attention as much right so just don't hesitate to like knock things back stylize a little bit and leave the details for your uh your focal point Uh, you got anything else, Nathan, about these? I just think keep drawing critters. They're awesome. Yeah, your critters rule. Don't let anyone tell you to to stop drawing critters. Never stop drawing critters. I love the critters. I love these designs so much. They're delightful. Uh, okay, we got 10 minutes left. We're making some good progress here. Let's see. Oh, we still have... I think we can do it. We just have to move quick. Okay. Um, we're first going, we're going to go to Rebecca Roney next. Rebecca Roney's like really good. So I'm just going to look at it and say, wow, that freaking rules. Nice. That's, um, that's but we'll always also, fun. We'll, we'll try to offer some critique as well, but yeah, I think Rebecca Roney's like, you know, maybe like a little better than me. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> at, at drawing? <laughs> So, so I don't know if I can, you know, uh, I feel like I don't, what, what the, I'm not going to say shit to you. What am I going to, yeah, what, how am I going to? I think I'm going to talk to you. Let's just put these pieces in here. That's so, they're yeah. Really, they're really cool. They're just nice. Yeah, they're doing, I think that's good to, they're doing the stuff we're talking about. Yeah, it's already. a good a good example of um, everything we've been saying kind of put into practice here. Yeah. 
pushed poses, high contrast. And still great shoes. We still we're great keeping, shoes. Keeping the good shoes theme going. Uh, and then I'll read where Beccaroni wrote so that we know what sort of critique they're looking for here. Cool, like a uh, character turnaround there. And then we can try our best. Let no one say we've not tried our best. That little possum. <laughs> so good. Okay, Rebecca Roney said, specifically, I'd like some help and critique on the vibes or the atmosphere. I'm really trying to get some cinema ass lighting and composition lately. Second thing is my character design. I wanted to get critique on the shape language silhouette and the color palette, especially since they are bright colors. Uh, also, is there anything in these pieces that says these were drawn with the same hand, like a common thread in style or shape? They all look very different from each other in my eye, and this makes me nervous about taking more commissions. I worry things might not turn out looking like my art, especially since I play with style a lot. Okay, so you're asking about vibes, you're asking about lighting and composition, you're asking about character design, and then like stylistic consistency. Um, I think vibe wise, well, like composition and lighting wise, I think you're doing a really good job. I really like the washed out tones of this. It's like really cohesive. It's got like that old school filmic look to it. Yeah. I love the texture. It's just like. Yeah. Very textural. I, I, I can't even tell whether that's done digitally or traditionally. And then this piece, I really like the lighting and composition. Yeah, that's fantastic composition. Uh, like, it just draws your eye right to the the focal point of the piece with no extra detail. And I really like the, the line work too. I think, um, whoop, whoop. <laughs> goodbye. Stylistic elements that are consistent in your piece um, your eyes and your ears. I notice. I, I would recognize. Yeah. And like, mouth, I would say. Oh, mouth too, for sure. You've got like the, the defined upper lip more so than the lower lip. Yeah. But like you got those round ears with sort of the similar rendering on them. And then the eyes, the shape of the eyes and the eyebrows, the thick brow. Yeah. There's like an expressiveness that sort of cuts across all the work. And then I think this has just been compliments so far. Let's get down to it. What sucks yeah. here? <laughs> yeah, let's freaking rip it apart. I, I don't even know. <laughs> uh, nothing the really sucks here. The shoes are too cool. The shoes are too cool. You made the shoes too cool. I can't look at anything else. Make the shoes less cool. No. Um, um, I think as far as character design goes, I do like the silhouette of like the shorts and like the big puffy coat. It it might be a a bit on the busy side. I don't know if I'm fully convinced of that though. I do think yeah, there could be know. more like like color cohesion, perhaps. But you kind of got some of that. You got some of the purple up top, some of the green down bottom. Is that even purple? Yeah, it's like indigo. Indigo. I don't know. I just like your work. I think it's good. I think you're doing great. I think if you could try anything, you could try like a simpler variation on the character, just with like a few less mm -hmm. details. But that yeah. would really be all I have to suggest. I don't know. You got anything, Nathan? Um, I, I, I like it. I like it. This pose is great. Pushed pose. I want to know about this black hole character with their possum friend 
They seem cool. I want to know what adventures they get up to. What adventures do they get up to? Main critique, we don't know what adventures they get up to. They drift through a wormhole somewhere. They're space wanderer, silly, carefree, no memory. I'm trying to think if there's any like elements we could use to like push more of the personality. Mm -hmm. I do get space explorer, like space yeah. wanderer. Uh, yeah, I love the the yellow coat, the way that contrasts with that like black hole center. Um, and the way that like the the fur lining on the on the hood sort of looks like like cosmic clouds and like feeds into that like Kirby crackle you got going on around like the neck area. Yeah, yeah. These, sorry, these aren't <laughs> critiques. They're just compliments again. But All right, I'm moving on. We're just complimenting yeah. you. Sorry. <laughs> You're really good at art. You're doing great. If you just keep going, you'll keep getting better. <laughs> but like you, I feel like when you're at this point, you pretty much know what you need to improve on. I think. Yeah. Um, the only thing I could possibly say is maybe try to simplify the character design a bit. It does kind of drag my eye around a little bit and sure. um, maybe try to, oh, I love that bubble helmet. Maybe try to like, if you could inject more personality into the design, like maybe a few more like astronaut-esque elements. But simpler. Yeah, I don't know, these are just thoughts. That's all I got. Thank you, Rebecca Roney. Thank you, Rebecca Roney. Keep up the good work. Okay, three minutes. Speed round. Oh, this is uh, this is a uh, love six work. Good this is beef. this is cool stuff. I like this stuff too. It's like wild style. Um, I'm looking for. Okay, here it is. Because they did like a collage. I really like this style, Lovesick. Gonna end up complimenting you too. Show me. Let's make Ooh. it big. Ooh. It's, so it's really cool. It's really cool. Yeah. It's got like such a vibe to it. Yeah. I don't know that I'm gonna have much to say because it like There, there's stuff that's like, you know, anatomically like weird or funky, but it like suits. Yeah, it feels intentional. It feels intentional and it suits the look and it looks like you're doing it on purpose. Like obviously, you know, these hands are like, are like funking out. <laughs> yeah. But it like, it like feels like that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Cause like this hand is like really well rendered and drawn. And so I'm like, you know how to do it. You're doing it on purpose. You're goofing. You're just goofing over here. But it's got like a lot of dynamism. It's like really fun. Really like engaging. Yeah. Let me see. Did you ask anything specific? Let's see. Oh, you said I really just want to share my characters who I love. You did it. Yeah, they we, rule. We love them. We love them too. <laughs> they rule. I love them too. I think you're. I think you're doing great. You've got a really identifiable style, which is is a is a really good thing to have. Like your work has a lot of like you. In it, if I saw this like on you know the internet, I'd be like, oh, I recognize that. I know I who did this. that. Yeah. Okay, I gotta I move. I gotta like... move quick. This rules though. Great work, Lovesick. I don't really have any critique because it's all it all feels very intentional. Looks like it could be cool like graffiti art too. Yeah, totally. I'd be walking around and see something like that on the side of a building and like stop and stare at it and be like, that's cool. I'm glad I saw that. I would stop and stare at it. Yeah. Maybe even take a photo. To okay, show we my got some later. here from So Eepy. 
said excited for draw class. Um, general critique is all right with me, but I do wish to get some general help with drawing characters consistently. I have such a hard time that I do a simple shoulders up approach so I can avoid drawing full bodies or just generally avoid the dilemma of thinking it doesn't look like the same character. Okay. Mm, okay. We can help with that. Do a do a quick quick tips. Quick tips. Quick tips. Quick tips. Uh, here's some characters. I do like these characters. They got like a I mean, I think I was about to say they have Beavis and Butthead vibes. I think that's because they are Beavis and Butthead. Oh. They have I mean, like yeah. it's like a little is it like uh the look the look oh yeah, yeah. heavily into to b and bh hence the amount of bbh fan art presented here <laughs> <laughs> well you know you got it i i yeah, picked up on we, it straight away we recognize the characters <laughs> um so if you want to draw characters consistently my biggest tip would be to um come up with like basically a style sheet for your character that's broken down into like simple shapes that you can remember yeah how to do like if your character's got yeah 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 <laughs> if you want to do a character that's got like uh you know like i'm looking at this this like butthead-esque character here you know sort of like wider hips and like thicker legs so like break them down in like your your sheet, you know, something like this. So that you can see when you're looking back like oh this is the shape of their their body. They've got like smaller shoulders, you know, wider hips, the arms kind of taper. So do like a shape breakdown like this. So that way you can start from your own reference. Yeah. And be like, oh, okay, so the this is like how the ratios work out, right? Like I got my hips that are a little bit wider than the tum tum, that's a little bit wider than the shoulders. That's like the shapes of this character. Yeah, you can even put in like guidelines if you want. Like put them yeah. on a grid or something. Yeah, put them on a grid, real, that's always really helpful. Real technical. Um, I'm not going to do that because no. I don't but you, want to. But you, but you can. But you should. Yeah, and then you can practice drawing. You know, you draw it once on the grid and then try drawing again and see where you're you're having inconsistencies between and be like, okay, I need to focus on making sure I'm getting the the arms the right length. Sometimes I draw them too short. Sometimes I I don't or you know. Absolutely. What it, whatever it whatever it may be, you'll be able to see it if you if you put a you have like a a, a base reference to look back at and uh, and some sort of way to measure measure it out and compare. Yeah, you want to have all your ratios and proportions locked in because as long as you know those, then you can draw them. You know, any which way you want. Uh, okay, we only have a couple more. Can we just try to like? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, are you okay with that, Nathan? I'm. Yeah, we we started a little late. I mean, I I spent so much time. I thought this was Nathan talks about his burrito stream, so I spent a lot of time doing that at the start. I mean, that was important too. Okay, as long as as long as people still still learn something from that. But yeah, we can go as long as we as we need to. There's only I think three, four more, four more submissions. Three or four. Yeah. Uh, we got Zion42, who did some some Pogemans. Ooh. And another little piece here. Just yeah, I feel like, you know, if people, if people took the time to sign up for this tier and, and submit art, we may as well get try and get through all of them. Yeah, I would like to. I don't, I don't care if we go a little long. I don't have anywhere to be. To get to them. And uh, paste it, paste it, paste it. Here we go. Paste it. Okay, so Zion42 said, hey, Jacob, here's a few drawings I've done. I would appreciate any critique on these. The Dratini is inspired by the famous Nessie photo. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And I like the, uh, the like, painterly look you got on these. Yeah, the lineless style. Looks very sort of like, um, like children's book illustration. Totally. Uh, I think where I would 
maybe make some additions to the Dratini one is uh, some of the Dratini is getting a little lost due to the tones being too similar. Right. Um, like the white of the belly here is like too close to this tone. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some of the where it meets the water, I think we could have some more like definition there. So maybe if you shade it a little bit more. Um, let me just get just get a good. Let me just get a good. You know, so you can just do some like a little bit more differentiation here. So that when you look at it, one thing you want to always do is like look at it from far away. Because mm -hmm. you got some shading there. I'd like to make this a multiply layer, please. Just got to move Nathan over. Move me. There we go. So I think just like, don't be afraid to shade a little darker in places. Don't be afraid to shade. Don't be afraid to shade. It like rhymes. It's like going into the water. Even shade like, you got a little bit of it, but yeah, like under the water too. It would be a little darker. Yeah, absolutely. Is. Get a little bit more of that kind of like where it fades away down there. You could yeah. get something like that, and then like you could get a little bit of lighter stuff, like where it's where it's disturbing the water as you know it moves through. Right, the, the reflection on the water. Yeah, there there are like you know two ways to to increase the contrast is like add add shadow or light to the foreground, or add shadow and or light to the to the background. I guess four ways. Um, cause yeah, you could, you could add that shading onto the belly like that, or you could just, you know, darken up the water behind the white as well. And that would also achieve. Yeah, that would work too. There's a, uh, you know, many ways you can, you can go about it as long as you go about it. One of the ways. Yeah. As you know, the goal is just to define your. Your forms define your forms if anything is getting lost don't be afraid to hop in and define it a little bit more and then i think you know in general you could uh, make like the foreground a little darker background a little lighter or vice versa to give a sense of depth uh the gengar i like i think um one other thing you could work on before we move on is working from shapes like construction shapes to begin with so like you know learn how to make like these like drawing spheres drawing tubes that's like the basis for everything because then you'll learn like how they attach to the body and it will let you uh get sort of your your forms a little more because where the face is sitting on the gengar is a little um a little off if you got like a little tubular dude and you want to sort of make him it's all like construction yeah so the more you work on construction the more you can you do that under drawing first and then you you do your cool lineless rendering style over top yeah and this is kind of a, this is kind of a crappy gengar but he's got some charm to him but you can see I'm like attaching like cones yeah. to this sphere based on like the angle of the, the lad. Um, and you can, you too can do this thing. You too can do this thing. And like, they're not actually horns, so you can like erase out these parts, but it'll make sure you got them like in the right places um, as you, as you go. So yeah, remember remember to construct. Construct your your fella. I really like that drawing, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a perfect Gengar, but he is a perfect friend. He's saying remember to construct. Remember to construct. Okay, next. We got pretty good hamster mom said hello there. I have a couple pieces I would love some critiques and options on. 
I feel like I can do a lot more of it, but don't want to get too busy either. Okay, let's let's take a look. Got some works in progress. Got some nice some nice stuff here. Okay, let's let's snag them. There's one. Here's two. And we're just gonna go like off the cuff, some quick tips, and then we we gotta move on. Quick tips. Ooh. Like a Viera from Final Fantasy. Yeah, it's definitely some Final Fantasy 14 stuff, which you know I approve of. Uh, and and they did say the second one, these two were like lighting practices. Yeah. And then these two were works in progress. So I feel like there's a lot that I'm liking here. Lots of good personality. I really like the way you draw fabric. Yeah, really nice fabric folds. I think um, you've got pretty good um, anatomy as well. I'm trying to get a better look at this one over here. Yeah, look at the fabric on these pants. That's looking great. It's like a Alice in Wonderland. Got the Cheshire cat and the white rabbit. It's fun. Very much so. I think the only thing I would recommend you work on is um, maybe like composition. Because some of these are placed a little awkwardly in frame. I know these are like works in progress and like for studies, but like, you know, make the head maybe a little bigger on this fella, get him in the center of the frame. This one over here, it just feels kind of like, um, like a little bit of flat composition, I guess. So maybe if you like try to place the characters in space a little more, like for this one here, um, Maybe if you had, like if you had it angled a bit, like the camera, so you've got like, you know, the, the one character who's like in the foreground here, and then like some of the others, if this is like the horizon line, right? Some of the others could be like a bit further back. Get them like going at like some different angles here. Yeah. And like punch in on it a bit, like a little bit more dynamic composition. Mm -hmm. You know, something like this. And this is a trick you can do too. If your horizon line is visible in your piece, you can hang your figures on the horizon line. This is like some uh, pro tip stuff. You can do what's called hanging your figures on it, which means that if, if you have figures in perspective, they're and one of them, like the horizon line cuts through one of their head, it'll cut through the other's head as well. You just make them smaller. Works for like any body part. Like if you have like a person standing here in the foreground and you got someone in the background, you're like, how do I put them on the horizon line? Just bisect their chest in the same place and then make them smaller in comparison. And they will be in perspective nice and you got like a guy back here in perspective so it's a good thing for like poses like this it makes you, you don't have to actually work out the perspective just make sure all their heads are on the, are on the horizon line yeah um so yeah something like that could make it a little more fun i think because you got good um you know good anatomy good good rendering and stuff is there any uh anything you had in mind nathan uh, no, I think you, you got it. I agree. Yeah, and your your lighting is good too. I think you can like um, start getting into some more um, like more defined lighting. There's a lot of like softness to it. So don't be afraid to like really cut in a little harder 
with those shapes and like make the lights brighter and the darks darker, more contrast. Like, let's see if we like, I don't know, I wanted like a levels. Do we have like a levels correction layer? Levels. Levels, hello. Levels, hello. Oh, that's like on everything. That's on everything. Do like this. Yeah. Try to make like the darks a little darker. And I know this is like saturating it too, which is like not what you want, but it's because there's like not a ton of difference between your darks and lights. It makes it harder to like separate them. Yeah. But yeah, don't, don't be afraid to like push it a bit, a bit more. So you have a bit more, um, draws the eye a bit more to your, your focal point. See what I mean? This is an extreme example, but uh, okay. Let's freaking get this done. I'm doing it. Thank you again to everyone who uh, submitted work to, to look at. It's very brave and it's very cool that you're seeking to improve. Um, I think that's actually, that's actually it. Oh, nice. That was the last one. Oh, Katie Bird? What's that? Did we skip Katie Bird earlier? Did I skip Katie Bird? Did I do a skip? I did a skip! Oh my God. Katie Bird, I'm so sorry. We'll, we'll do you right now. I scrolled right past. How foolish. Ooh. One. Nice. This one's cool. Got kind of like a video game clue vibe to it. Ooh. I feel like I'm in draw detectives. Yeah. And we just found this and we're like, who's the other person? And this is a fun one. Really like the expression on this one. Oh, these are nice. Okay, let me get back to chat. Yeah, I really like these. I really yeah. like this one especially. Yeah. I feel like the, the shapes of it are really good. The expression is really like on point. Like it looks like, you know, genuine like happiness, like carefree happiness. Yeah. I think this arm is maybe a tad short. I know the foreshortening on it is a little hard, but I think it'd be more like, like this and then coming up. Mm. Um, and the hands are really nice too. Nice hand shapes. Yeah, I like that one. I think the only thing that I that I might do is um push the pose. Push the pose. <laughs> you know, just like maybe you set it. Maybe like kick the torso out a little bit more in one direction and then yeah. You know, shoulder in the other direction. And you can have it like you know, dipping down like this. One shoulder here, one shoulder coming this way, head this way. Chest goes up like that. You know. Oh, and you then, know. Then there's that foreshortened arm I'm talking about. Yeah. And then you could even have like the head kind of looking, looking like down this way. Cause like with foreshortening, you can always like cheat it out a little bit to show a little bit more of the thing, even if like in real life, it wouldn't be doing that. Just cause sometimes foreshortening, even if it's technically correct, looks kind of weird. Yeah, totally. You're, you're allowed to pose your, 
your your person differently so that uh if it if it looks even if it's correct if it doesn't look correct it can still be distracting and like you see i'm kicking the skirt out a little bit yeah to get more of like a spin effect that centrifugal force yeah which um you know that sort of effect is not as hard as people think it is you basically just make like a like a circle like this and then just like add add floopies add this stuff to it <laughs> all like converging at the at the point it's like it seems like really complicated when you see people do it but then once you get used to it it's not that hard yeah really nice piece though um, I think on this one, we got some facial anatomy issues. The ear is too high and the eye is too over. It's tough when the head is like tilted. It can kind of like skew your perspective. Maybe if we flip on it, it might make it easier to see. We can just do a... If this is the head here, coming down like this. Yeah, the ear would have to be like a little lower on the head, maybe even a little lower than that. Because it's sort of like a, it's a complicated angle. It's like to the side and is it is it down? It's kind of like this. Yeah, are we like right on the the line? Yeah. And so the nose. And you, I think what's actually bothering me about the eyes that like we were talking about earlier, you've got the eye like it was straight on, but we're at a pretty intense three quarters tilt. So you got to cheat that angle. Because the eye forms like a triangle yeah. when you're at this sort of angle. And then the mouth sort of like this. Something like that. Yeah. Then we can do a, a little compare here. Yeah, it just captures more of the uh, the turn of the the head. Katie Birdie said, "I I always put ears so high. I should check that more." Tbh. Yeah, everyone's got like habits like that. Um, that are like we you just don't see them when you're doing it. I mean, I know I have them, but then uh, it's just something you can like check out for. Make sure you're doing like when you construct the head. Do the lines around. Do like the the two bands, and then put the ear in the middle of the two bands. Yeah, it's and like then, eyebrow and bottom of nose. Yeah, right? the brows go like on this thing, and then the nose bottom goes on this thing. That's like the typical, and obviously different people have different sized ears and noses, so they're yeah. not, that's not always going to be true, but it's like a, a good starting place to check. Yeah, if you just put those in there, it'll definitely help. Help you get the ratio right. Rebecca Roney said the number of times I've had to relearn how to draw a face. Yeah, every once in a while, you have to go back and watch a YouTube video again and be they like, keep, I think I forgot. I think I forgot yeah. how it goes. No, it's they keep changing faces. <laughs> Face, they keep changing them. They're not they the same. They, it's the last patch update. Yeah. They made them, they made them harder to draw. So you've got to relearn. Um, okay, I think that's that's everyone. Let's flip back, actually. Um, this piece I just really like. I think it's got cool vibes, cool style. Yeah. And it works well with like the the look of the the tarot card. So yeah, those are some things you can try. Push push your poses. Make sure your head proportions are uh, are correct. I do like what you did in this piece with like the shoulders though. You got a nice curve of like the back with the shoulder yeah. in the front. That's like what we were talking about. It is what we were talking about with the shoulders put into practice. Nice. 
Uh, yeah, great, great work, everyone. Thanks for everyone for submitting. This was uh, this was a lot of fun. I really like doing these. Yeah, these are really cool. It's cool to see where, like, everyone's at such different places in their they're learning to draw artistic journeys and we're all just here together trying to improve yeah it's really to... fun to see because you every like piece of art i see and when i recognize the place the person's in i was like i was there i was you yeah at some point in the past i was you and then i see other people and i'm like at some point in the future i will be you <laughs> <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> we're all just on the line on the, the yeah. never-ending line um, but if you keep at it, if you just draw with regularity, you'll eventually get, I would say where you're trying to go, but you never get where you're trying to go. Yeah. That's part of the journey, but you'll get better. You'll end up somewhere. Yeah. You'll get better infinitely if you don't stop drawing. Um, Nathan, thanks for joining me on this one. Oh, my pleasure. And thanks to all the, the draw class patrons. That's the siren that says the stream is ending. Yeah. It was um, a long one, but you know what? You deserve it. You deserve it. For you, anything. Um, and we'll we'll be back with another stream. Drawfee on Monday. Drawfee on Monday. Secret sleepover on Sunday. Nathan, are you streaming? Uh, Wednesdays. Usually. Wednesdays, not Sundays. No. I don't know how you guys do Sundays. I'm We're crazy. Pooped. At the end of the weekend, all I want to do is curl up and have more weekend have more weekend all right everyone we'll see you We're next gaming. time thanks again for submitting yeah thanks so much thanks for your support um if you're watching in the future you can you can watch these live by signing up at the uh, the learner tier on the patreon and i want to do more critique streams as well so if you want to get yeah. your art critiqued it's a good a good thing to sign up for yeah all right bye everyone Bye. Stream.